pang sa buhay natin Langit ay abutin May dahilan Ang buhay natin Na dapat mong malaman At pagandaan May dahilan Ang buhay natin Na tanging Diyos lamang Ang iyong kasagutan Tao imulat mo Ang iyong isipan Ang pasya mo gawin sa pagkukong na darating Ito ang dahilan kung ba ikaw ay narito upang sa buhay natin langit ay abutin May dahilan ang buhay natin na dapat mong malaman at paghandaan May dahilan Na tanging Diyos lamang ang iyong kasagutan May dahilan ang buhay natin Na dapat mong malaman at pagandaan May dahilan ang buhay natin Na tanging Diyos lamang ang iyong kasagutan May dahilan Na dapat mong malaman at paghandaan May dahilan ang buhay natin Na tanging Diyos lamang ang iyong kasagot Hello, praise the Lord! This is Pastor Nilo Plaza Filipino missionary based in Hong Kong And works also as co-associate pastor of New Life Fellowship UPCHK The content of my channel is mainly the preaching and teaching of the Word of God and some reviews and reaction of videos from other great preachers of the Apostolic Circle. Some of my contents here in this channel are views and videos of the Holy Land and Hong Kong and its outlying islands. Welcome to my channel. Enjoy and subscribe. God bless you. Uh, 
Kristen pero tayo yung manalangin na magkaroon sila ng pangyayapaan sa kanilang puso. Amang pala na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Maraming salamat ng Diyos sa hapon ito. Ikaw ang aming kasama, Panginoon. Praise God. At salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong presensya, sa iyong habag, Panginoon. Kung na nalangin, Panginoon, sa mga pre-request na aming uh, dadalhin ngayon, si Dr. Junya Kalot, Panginoon, pagalingin mo ang itas ng kanyang uh, mga magkaroon ng buong katawan din niya, Panginoon. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pagkaroon sa Panginoon ng recovery. At ang buong pamilya niya, Panginoon, ay magkaroon ng kalintasan, Panginoon, mula sa ilang ilang pangalan. At hindi na, Panginoon, kalintaan na pagkitin ang pangalan nila, Sister Dal, Panginoon, Sister uh, Praise God, Nina Dulay, Panginoon, Sister Rosalind Vizquiza, Panginoon, Sister Jennifer Nakwit, Panginoon, at sa mga kapatiran na nagbabagin ng kanilang pangalan, Panginoon, praise God, hallelujah sa tiyong sa trono, Panginoon, ng aming kapatid ngayon, Panginoon, na ngayong lunes ay may appointment sa doktor. Ikaw, Panginoon, praise God, ang magay sa kanilang pagbigay, Panginoon, ang good report, Panginoon, kung ano man ito, Panginoon, na fix mo na ito sa kanyang katawan naman. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong proteksyon at covering sa amin. Ikaw, Panginoon, hallelujah, ang aming sarwigan, Panginoon, na kami tatakbo sa iyong presensya. Pagpalaan mo rin ang aming mga bisita na kasama namin na iyong hapon, Panginoon. Ibukos mo, Panginoon, ang spiritual blessing sa kanila. In Jesus' name, I pray everybody shall amen. Amen! Praise God, isang malakas na parang para sa ating mga 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 Praise God, maakal, maakal, na si Kisya doon sa Diliyahin po mga kapatid dahil meron siyang uh, activity doon mga kapatid praise God para sa kanilang uh, uh, interview sa ka mga kapatid pagpasok sa Sikat na Liwan S1 next year praise God at 8 uh, years ago I was standing there in that property to bring car praise God to enter S1 at uh, Look how time flies so fast. Praise God. Hindi pa pinanganak si Kisha. Kisha was not yet born to be this time. And now I'm going back. Praise God. No, I think that three years, should I say. Kisha was already three years old. Hallelujah at that time. And I thank the Lord. I met Sigurd Albilfino there. And thank God for the day for my father. Uh, although medyo malayo pa kapatid pero nag-enjoy naman si Kisya ang sabi niya sa akin I want this is <laughs> praise God <laughs> hallelujah salamat sa Panginoon at uh, kagabi mga kapatid nag-visit sa ko kay uh, Brother Louis mga kapatid na sabi ko sa kanya just in case na hindi ko mahabol ang uh, service uh, alam ko na marami ang preaching mga mensahe na nilagay na sa iyong puso ikaw ang preach bukas kung hindi ko makatch. Praise God. At salamat sa Panginoon na catch ko pero sinagihan ko siya. Talagang isip ko wala. Praise God. Nasa stress mga kapatid doon sa paikot-ikot na kanina mga primoras. From 8th floor go down to the ground and then go back to 5th floor and then go back to the 4th floor go back again to the rooftop and then there's no lift. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we just use the stairs. Hallelujah. So I told him Praise God, I know that this is the way of God, mga kapatid, na makinig tayo sa salita ng Panginoon. Praise God for the ministry of Brother Lewis. I'm just hoping your heart, praise God to the Lord. Praise God, hallelujah. Alam ko may nagawin ng Panginoon sa ating kanitikahan. Hallelujah, ito, Brother Lewis. Praise God, hallelujah. The minister, the word of the Lord. Praise God, and it's our joy, hallelujah, to share this happy to you. Praise God, for the supper of the Lord. Thank you so much. Why don't you praise the Lord? Yes, I'm happy to be back. 
So thank you, Lord. I'm happy to see him and his, uh, his child here as well. Uh, why don't we open our Bibles and go to the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 11 to 18. Exodus 33, 11 to 18. And what's your call in there? Um, so happy to see your face as well. I know you're all masked up, uh, but I'm happy to see new people as well. Uh, happy to see my sister from the Saturday group. I haven't seen her in over a year. I think since I preached the anniversary service. Um, and I'm happy to see her today as well. All of you who treat us all nice, and of course my wife and my two ladies uh, here. I'm obviously ecstatic about it. Uh, Sister Anne as well, who takes good care of our baby boy. Please keep her in your prayers as well when you're praying for my family. And we really appreciate it. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're going along as long as the Hong Kong beat of life, so please do keep us all in your prayers. We feel it. Uh, and we know you're praying for us, and I honestly thank you so much for that. So let's get into the word of the Lord today. The book of Exodus 33, 11 to 18, the Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, Thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence not go with me, carry us not up hence, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, and from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. This afternoon, I felt this as Sister Cynthia was praying this, uh, to open the service. And I know there's a hunger for the Lord in this place. I know you are hungry to feel from God, a word from the Lord, a, a touch from the Lord. So this afternoon, I would like to preach to you under this title, Show Me Your Glory. Show Me Your Glory. If Pastor Plaza, would you mind praying for, for this? Do not come any closer, the Lord born. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. These are some of the first words that Moses heard from the Lord. From whom? He would later come to know as the I am. The God Almighty had just spoken to Moses, a man who was tending sheep in the land of Midian, and suddenly decided to approach a burning bush that would not stop burning. 
We know the history of this man. He was a Hebrew who rejected to be called the son of Pharaoh and instead chose to be an outcast. And when he sees this burning bush, he is told to take off the sandals as he is standing on holy ground. God is the one that places an extraordinary calling on Moses' hands. He has just been called to the biggest empire on earth at the time to ask Pharaoh to let the children of Israel go. Moses, I can imagine, at first is scared and of course, as any other human being, he doubts his calling. But God makes him a few promises that will come to his mind later on in life. He tells Moses, certainly I will be with thee. To encourage you, Moses, to protect you, Moses, to defend you, to prosper you, and to make you a successful person, Moses, certainly I will be with you. Amen. What a calling and what an experience that Moses has just had. We read later on the instructions that he gives to Moses as to how to go about freeing the people of, out of the land of Egypt. And we also read that Moses had success. What a calling sometimes I feel that God places on individuals like you and I. And the way in which he does it is somewhat so special. The reassurance that we feel on that day, it's overwhelming that an almighty God calls us. That's how Moses felt. Moses went ahead and he freed the people out of their oppression. What a great sight it must have been to see millions of people walking by the open Red Sea. The book of Exodus, which is named this way because it details the way in which people exited the land of oppression, the land of Egypt. And the many fights, it details us their troubles. But most of all, it details to us their dealings with this. God and how He provided it for them when they needed something. Our text this afternoon we find Moses having another great experience with the Lord. He was in the midst of receiving the Ten Commandments from the Lord directly. Imagine what an experience this must have been to be in the presence of the Lord, receiving the commandments that would detail the law that would be in effect even to this day. It is at that point when he was at such a high, such a peak at the top of a mountain that the people decide to build an idol. Yes. And they decided to worship a golden calf. Mm. You know, sometimes idols, they look pretty, they look rich, they look, they shine with splendor, but this idol was not God. Amen. It may be shiny, it may be rich, it may be, look powerful, but I'm telling if it looks, well, no matter what it looks like, it's just not God. It may even be made of gold, but it doesn't talk. It may be solid, but it can't hear. And it can't see, and it can't express, and it can't feel what God feels. No matter how much they worship, no matter how much they would have wanted to worship the idol and bow down to the idol, I promise you that I would not have been able to help the people of Israel. Right. Moses is told by God to get down and sort out the mess that the people have found themselves in. The man that was in such a high is now found walking down to hear that his families and the, the people that he brought out are in sin. The people that he brought out are now detained are being oppressed by a worship to a golden calf. When he got down the mountain, he saw the disobedience of the people of Israel. We were so good. When I went up, it was so good. What happened? And the correction came upon Israel. God was angry. He was ready, the Bible says, to do evil to them. However, Moses interceded. And the Bible says that God repented of what He was about to do to the people. 
having corrected the people, God promised, promises Moses that he had to go and conquer the land and that an angel would go with them. I believe at this point something clicked in the mind of Moses because he realized an angel going with me. Wait, I need you to be with me. I believe that at this point, when God told him that an angel was going with him, I believe that Moses remembered his calling. That Moses remembered all of those times where he had experienced something special with God. This just doesn't feel the same way, God. You're sending an angel. And whilst others may have settled there and be content with any help, divine help. Moses makes his way to a tabernacle that he had pitched away from the sinful people. The tabernacle was moved somewhere or else. And he enters into the presence of God. And after having seen thousands die at the hands of the, of the Lord in anger, Joshua, a young man, stands behind the tabernacle waiting to see what happens when Moses gets in. What happens when my leader goes into this tabernacle? Every time you see you go and you meet with God, there is always someone that is watching what happens with you. It may be your family, it may be your son, it may be your daughter or someone here in this church. Someone is always watching when you make yourself available to the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Joshua stood behind the tabernacle. What is my leader going to do? What is going to happen to my leader? I need to be there to see this. And the people also, the Bible says, they watched from afar. To see what is going on. What would God speak to Moses about this time? The Bible lets us know that this was a special place. This place that they had set aside was going to be the meeting place. This is where it's going to happen. The Bible says that it was like two friends speaking to each other face to face. There was a pillar of cloud which came down and hovered over the entrance of the tent when Moses was in there speaking to God. There was a huge admiration because the people bowed down as they noticed something was happening when Moses was speaking to God. The people noticed as the cloud hovered over the entrance, they realized something is happening there. This was not meant to be another routine prayer meeting between Moses and the call. No, this was something new. This was something special. All these things that occurred were to show the people then and the people now of just how special it is when you meet and you talk to an almighty God. You see, sometimes we take for granted that we can just walk into church and open our mouths and speak to Him. No, it is not just another common thing when you pray to the Almighty God. Praying to Him is not something we just do from 2 to 4 on a Saturday. No, praying to Him is something we do. And when we pray to Him, the routine goes out the window. Every time you kneel before God, every time you touch the presence of God, it is not just another routine prayer that you do. It is not just another convocation of words that you cry out. No, it is a special touch between a man and a God that can only touch with his earthly hands. Every time you kneel before your bed at night, every time. 
He says, you have been telling me, take this people up to the promised land. But you haven't told me who you will send with me. You have told me I know you by name and I look favorably all on you. If it is true, Lord, that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways. So that I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. In other words, what Moses was saying is, wait, I remember the time I crossed the Red Sea and you told me that you were with me. I remember the time you called me. And you said that you were going to be there. But now you haven't told me who you are sending. No God, I'm not questioning your will. And I'm not being bitter. Because I know that you know me by name. I have experiences to back that up. I know that you called me is what Moses is saying. I know I have found grace in your sight. And I know I am in your hand, Lord. But all I am asking you, Lord, is to confirm to me by letting me know your will. In other words, renew me in your presence once again. Talk to me. Just one more time. He may have gone far, he may have been 
sold out of the land of Egypt. He may have been at the highest mountain already, but without him, I can't go on. I can't continue. Moses realized that the reason why the people of Israel were different was nothing more than having God in their midst. And he was not going to settle for a great people and no presence of an almighty God. That's why church today, we cannot settle for anything less than the presence of God in our church. I would like to propose to you that church is not about you and I. Church is about Him. We can come and we can look really good. We can come to this church and sing really good. We can come to this church and look really good. But my goodness, if He's not here, if God does not show up, then this is not a church. A church is only a church. If he is with us, without him, we are not Christian. You may look the part, you may dress the part, you may you may dress like the holiest woman ever. You may dress from head to toe, cover everything by your eye. Christ is not in us. We can't call ourselves a church if God is. If God is not here, we might as well go home. If God does not show up, we might as well pack our bags, put our Bibles away, stop the singing, stop the playing, and just go home and stop pretending. We got so many pretend Christians. We look the part, we sound the part, we talk the part, we dress the part, but my goodness, we have no part in Him. We need Him inside of us. I need Christ inside of me. I need you here. I need you here again. voice again. I may have done many great things, but Lord, speak to me again. An angelic voice going with me sounds amazing, but Lord, it's not enough. Someone telling me that I'm going to be okay, it's not enough. Someone telling me that my family will be alright, just carry on, it's not enough. God, I need you to tell me yourself. I need you to speak to me, Lord. I'm still hungry to hear that voice of the Lord in my life. I'm still thirsty to feel the Spirit of the Lord running through me one more time. That thirst and that hunger has never ended, and it will never end. And it's the same in you. People may come and they tell you you're going to be alright. Just carry on, just carry on doing what you're doing. And I'm telling you that's all good and fine, but there's nothing like when God speaks to you. And when God tells you, God's son, I will be. With me. Then you know that in your steps in the morning, they're ordered by the Lord, that you have a confidence that God has spoken to you and you will go. But unless the Lord tells you, the more you're relying on your own experience and your own past and your own background and your own strength, and you think you're walking right, but if you don't, no, you 
just don't know. You need the Lord. We need to hear His voice again in our lives. We need to hear His heart again telling us the direction we need to go. You see, we are a church. A church is a group of called out individuals redeemed to serve their master and we wouldn't be anything without our master and savior Jesus. We cannot be happy by just having a service. We have to make sure Jesus is in that service. That's the reason we pray. That's the reason we sing. That's the reason we clap our hands. That's the reason we shout. That's the reason we give. That's the reason we dance. That's the reason we testify. That's the reason why we run the aisle. That's the reason why we lift up our hands. That's the reason why we walk through those doors to make sure that Jesus is giving the glory. I promise you, I don't sing with because you sing so well. I sing with you because I know who I worship. I don't come to church to please you. I come to church to please Him. I don't come to sing because of you. I come to sing because of Him. I don't come to shout because of you. I come to shout because of Him. I come to run
if you can, if you can, please come to the altar at this time. I haven't finished, but I finished at the same time. Make your way up to the altar and we'll pray all together. Because I feel the Lord is in this house this afternoon. So many people need direction and answers from the Lord. Come to the altar at this moment. Make your way up here. Lift up your hands up to heaven. You can bow down. You can stay standing up. And raise your hands up to the Lord as you're praying. Hallelujah. When Moses asked the Lord, show me your glory. God tells Moses, you cannot see my face, because if you see my face, then you will die. But there is a place prepared for you, on the rock. I will show you my goodness, my grace and my mercy first of all, because every time I show you these things, I show you my glory. However, Moses, there is a place I prepared for you. It's on the rock. I will pass by. And you will see my back as I pass by. Years pass. And Jesus is manifested in the flesh. On a mountain, whilst the transfiguration is taking place of Jesus Christ, light shines from heaven. Moses and Elijah are there. And Moses gets to see Jesus, the greatest manifestation of God. And the cry that Moses once had of show me your glory. He was finally able to see Jesus Christ. But we cry out today we may not see straight away. But have this faith in you. That one day. You will see him face to face. There will be no more tears there. There will be no more crying there. There will be no more lament there. There will be no more moaning. There will be no more sickness there, there will be no more money there, there will be no more stress there, there will be no more anxiety there. One day I will see His glory. One day I will see His face.
Paulo vai fazer quando é que eu lhe ligo Senhor. Agora é muito bom. Agora é muito bom. God is going to fail you. And you're going to hear us speak to the Lord. I know we all pray. But in a few moments, God is going to fail you. If you're here and you're visiting us for the first time, I want you to say these words with us. Show me your glory. And as you're saying those words, God is going to come and He's going to start filling you with His Holy Spirit. And as He's filling you with His Spirit, you are then going to begin to speak in a different language, in a different tongue, to show the evidence that you have received the glory of the Lord in your life. Saints, I want you to speak it out loud as well. If you need direction from the Lord, I want you to say, show me your glory. If you need healing from the Lord, I want you to say, show me your glory. If you need to be filled with His Holy Spirit, I want you to say, show me your glory. If you need the Lord to heal and forgive you, I want you to say, show me your glory. Everyone raise up your hands. This is a prayer I can't pray for you. This is a prayer only you can pray. One, two, three. Show me your glory. Hanggang ito'y iniwan
iwan niya At nang kanyang malaman Paligid ay tahimik na Bahay niya'y nilapitan Itinayo sa dating anyo na Sana'y Kristiyano'y tutunan Sa gagamba Kanyang na 
nakikita ang iyong kahirapan at ikaw ay kanyang tanga. At kung ito ay di mo na kaya, ikaw ay kakalun. Gabay ka sa lahat ng panahon Ikaw ay purihin Ikaw ang Diyos namin Emmanuel 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 Kapiling natin Iman Gabay ka sa lahat ng panahon Ikaw ay purihin Ikaw ang Diyos namin Iman Ima